Good evening, Jim Rocks. Welcome to Royal Oasis Spa for You Educational Tidbits. My name is Zenobia, licensed esthetician in Maryland, D.C. and Virginia. For those who are new to my channel, how y'all doing out there today? Thank you so much for stopping by today. Please view all of my other educational videos to learn more about Royal Oasis Spa for You. Don't forget to click that subscribe and notification button to be the first to receive notifications when new educational tidbit videos are uploaded. We want you to stay connected. We want you to stay up to date with the latest content from your favorite creator. Give it to me. Give it to me now. Give it to me. <laughs> Yeah, yes. And I share my business with my husband, Corey, who's also a licensed esthetician and caters to the male clientele. Corey specializes in the beard treatments. He's all about that beard game, the beard maintenance, and those males who are struggling with growing their mane. So ask him about Nobleman Organic Beard Balm and Beard Tonic, or just visit our website and place your order. Now, if you want to keep in touch and you want to know what's happening in our world, engage with us in conversation, honey, then listen to our podcast. And guess what? You can do a soft subscribe and follow me on all of my social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok at Royal Oasis Spa. Now, if you're seeking more of a focal point of my business and you want to learn about my services and treatments that we provide, feel free to tour my website at, there you go, Royal Oasis Spa-GJC.com. Y'all, y'all growing up. Oh my goodness. Now today, I want you to consider this to be the beginner's guide to LED therapy. Yay! We are going to explore this pioneering skincare solution and understand how LED light intermingles with skin cells to the various applications of acne and more. This guide, this tool, this educational tidbit empowers you to making this a excellent addition to your skincare routine. Now let's get into it, my babies. What is LED? LED is the light emitting diode light therapy, and it's also known as phototherapy, which is non-invasive that enters the skin skin, which enters the skin layers <laughs> and treats various skin conditions and concerns such as mild to moderate acne, fine lines and wrinkles, psoriasis, eczema, hair loss, rosacea, uh, sun damage, and actinic keratosis, which is a rough, scaly, precancerous spots on the skin. So LED is like a semiconductor that converts that electrical energy into light energy and released in the form of photons. Photons are light energy that can be absorbed by chromophores in the body cells. So as we age, we produce less and less cellular energy. Now, LED light comes in different types, including red light and blue light and yellow light. So the red light travels further into your skin. The blue light affects the uppermost layer of your skin. Now, let me ask you a quick question because I, I really don't know, so I want to know if you guys know. Now, did you know that some researchers found that the blue light therapy may contribute to aging by causing free radical damage to the skin? Put that in the comment section. If y'all know about that and heard about that or have some information about it, please let me know because um, I like to do more research on that. That is something how something is good for you, but then it may cause something else. Okay, but anyway, um, the yellow light, that penetrates deeper too. Now, when you use these lights and, and you know, like in a combination, the different LED light colors do different things. So in some cases, let's say for instance, like the LED light therapy may treat small and superficial basal cell carcinoma, which is um, a skin cancer. You know, we call it BCC. Uh, basal cell carcinoma is a skin cancer and it's a it's most common type of skin cancer and it affects about 3.6 million Americans each year. LED light therapy doesn't use ultraviolet light, so it doesn't cause damage. It doesn't cause burns to your skin. So the application uses specific wavelengths of light energy to, to tissue to obtain therapeutic benefits for a variety of conditions, including skin pain and hair restoration. LED light therapy is non-thermal, which means it does not use heat. 
So LED has been shown to help with the lymph system and increase ATP energy production in the cells. Now there are, excuse me, medical um, conditions treated with LED light therapy, such as jaundice, brain and liver cancer, radiation-induced dermatitis, uh, dermatitis, pain and inflammation, diabetic neurop neuropathy. Um, even though estheticians do not treat these conditions, but it's good to know that LED light therapy helps with these medical conditions. Um, let's do a quick history lesson. Um, in the 1990s, the technology, the LED technology was first discovered after NASA began studying LED's effects in promoting wound healing in astronauts by helping their cells, you know, and, and tissues after a long-term space mission. And it's amazing because today, 20, we'll be at 2024, we are still using LED light. Dermatologists, estheticians are still using LED light therapy to treat a range of skin um, issues. Uh, um, red light therapy may reduce inflammation. It stimulates the production of collagen, um, which we all should know that that's a protein in our body that's responsible for younger looking skin that diminishes with age. Red light is a treatment that helps skin, muscle tissue, and other parts of the body that needs healing. So red light therapy exposes you to the low levels of red or near infrared light. Infrared light is a type of energy your eyes can't see, but your body can feel, you know, feel the heat. Red light therapy is similar to infrared, but you can see the, you know, red light. Uh, red light therapy is also called photobiomodulation, PBM. That's, a, or they'll call it um, a low level laser therapy or low power laser therapy. So now let's get into, let's transition to how it works. LED works by light energy, which is photons. Then it's absorbed by cells. Then it fuels metabolic processes. Then it creates homeotosis, if I'm saying that right. Um, a collagen and elastin synthesis. So just to think of LED light, like photosynthesis when you was in science class, the solar energy. So LED works by releasing light onto the skin to stimulate specific responses at a precise depth of the skin. So the skin cells absorb therapeutic light and it use it as a source of energy to stimulate cellular function. So the LED light, uh, the LED color of light is also seeking color um, in the skin, known as chromophore. Um, chromophore is the is a derived um, word, Greek word or Greek term, chroma meaning color. Chromophore is a color component within the skin such as blood or melanin. So when the colored light reaches a specific depth in the skin, it triggers a reaction such as stimulating circulation or reducing the number of bacteria. Now a part of our cells called mitochondria, sometimes called the um, power generators or powerhouses of the cells. And their main function is to generate the energy necessary to power cells. Now, mitochondria is an organelle found in the cells um, of eukaryotes, eukaryotes um, such as animals, plants, and fungi, which are all living things that are not bacteria. So the red light therapy is thought to work by acting on the power plant in your body cells, which is called mitochondria. Um, with more energy, other cells can do their work more efficiently, such as uh, um, uh, repairing, repairing your skin, boosting new cell growth, and enhancing skin rejuvenation. Red light therapy has a, such a significant effect on the um, mitochondrial stimulation, which increases the production of ATP. Um, you have to look it up because I cannot pronounce it. And so 
that in turn boosts the fibroblast activity. So ATP is an energy carrying molecule found in the cells of all living things. Fibroblast is a cell in connective tissue which produces collagen and other fibers. So it's all about the science here. And, and, and it's all about the biological body. So more specifically, certain cells absorb light wavelengths and they are stimulated to work. So the red light therapy travels deeper into your skin than the blue light and the yellow light. Now, red light therapy may work and skin health to stimulate collagen production, which gives it its structure, strength, and elasticity. Um, you know, uh, after the age of 30, we lose approximately 1% of collagen per year. So red light therapy may work in skin health to increase fibroblast production, which makes collagen. As I stated, collagen is a component of, of, of connect tissue that builds skin. So, you know, skin loses its spring, you know, that, 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 that thing that it has, you know, the elasticity it has, it loses that. It starts to diminish the, um, elastin production starts to diminish. Um, the red light therapy may work in skin health to increase blood circulation to the tissue and reduce inflammation in cells. Um, what skin conditions in red light therapy being tried? Well, first, the red light therapy is promoted as a treatment for some common skin conditions. So when we're talking about the what skin conditions is red light therapy being tried on, Definitely improves on the wound healing, um, reduces stretch marks, reduces wrinkles and fine lines, those age spots, improves the facial texture, definitely um, improves um, psoriasis, rosacea, eczema, it improves on scars, improves sun damaged skin, it improves hair growth with people with alopecia, and most, most. Importantly, it, in, it improves acne. So as you know, with technology, things are still being tested. St things are still being quantified and studied to have enough evidence to support the cases. But so far, results are looking promising. It is still emerging therapy, but it holds its promise. Uh, red light therapy is safe. It has no side effects associated, at least if it's used short term and as directed. Okay, um, red light therapy is not toxic, it's not invasive, it's not as harsh as some topical treatments. Unlike the cancer causing ultraviolet light from the sun or tanning booths, you know, it's not like that. So, red light therapy doesn't use that type of light at all. But you should already know if you do too much of something, then it's not going to be good for you. So, if you misuse this, then chances are you damaging your skin and you damaging your eyes and that's not good. And we don't want that for you. So use it as you're supposed to, as the manufacturer instructions, as your professional, you know, skincare, uh, uh, um, you know, person or your dermatologist do it, use it the right way. Don't abuse it. All of the colors in the led light has specific wavelengths or specific frequency of pulsating light meaning it penetrates human tissue superficially with approximately 80% of the energy absorbed in the first um, two centimeters. So it's very beneficial to skin cells. Now, the red light wavelength, is the range is 640 to 660 nanometers. So the red has a long wavelength. That means if it has a long wavelength, it's more penetrating, the same as the infrared. Now, it, now the blue light wavelength is uh, 410 to 450 nanometers. So that has a shorter wavelength. What that mean? It's less penetrating. That's right. So the yellow light wavelength is five, 575 to 595 nanometers. The green light wavelength is 500 to 525 nanometers. So the wavelength of light are measured in nanometers. Now, I have the LED Pro multi-wave uh, light system from Spawn Equipment. And they are right in that range. The red light that um, 
that that that's you know built into that equipment the red light is 640 nanometers the amber light is 590 nanometers the blue light is 470 nanometers so it's very high quality led system now let's get into the blue light therapy Blue light therapy uses a specific range of blue light wavelengths from 380 to 500 nanometers that penetrates the epidermis to provide skin benefits. Now, blue light therapy, it may destroy um, acne causing bacteria, P, the P acne, because it's antimicrobial, meaning it targets and destroys the bacteria, typically causes cystic acne. Um, LED light doesn't help with blackheads. It doesn't help with whiteheads. Okay. And blue light can also reduce the swelling and the information that characterize cystic acne. So blue light therapy can assist with future breakouts. Now it is believed that the blue light, blue LED light reduces the activity in the sebaceous gland. Sebaceous gland are the microscopic organs in the skin that secrete uh, an oily substance called sebum. So if you touch your nose at the top, you can feel like a waxy film on your skin. Okay. That's the sebum that lubricates and waterproofs the skin. The sebaceous glands are a part of the integumentary system, which includes the skin, hair, and nails and other structures that help protect the body from environment and physical damage. Now the reduction in activity causes the glands to produce less oil that can plug the hair follicles leading to acne. So with blue light, the blue LED light, this is possibly improving acne symptoms. But we'll talk about the sebaceous glands and acne more at a later time. So I don't want to, you know, get too far into that. Um, the blue light, it affects the uppermost layer of your skin. So the major drawback that I found of the blue light therapy for cystic acne is the blue light's ability to penetrate deeply into the skin. But one study I have read, and um, there was a study back in 2021, showed some promise, but I'm still doing research on that. So it is said that the photodynamic therapy can be used for um, inflammatory cystic acne. Said is it's very effective in treating these conditions. Blue light is a go-to for combating congestion and treating moderate acne. So it's an option for to, to it's an option for helping treat and even prevent acne breakouts because it targets and destroys the P acne, which is a bacterium found on the skin that is responsible for acne. So we believe, estheticians believe, dermatologists believe, uh, 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 the, those people who study this, they believe when you combine the red light with the blue light, the wavelengths are able to penetrate into the dermis and treat the inflammation and cystic acne as well as boost the body's natural repair system. Blue light therapy is commonly used to treat sun damage or pre-malignant or malignant skin cancer growth. Excuse me. Dermatologists often use blue light treatment for cancerous and precancerous skin as a part of the photodynamic therapy, which employs photosynthesis synthesizing or light sensitive medication and high intensity blue light to activate them. So I do want to share that the blue light therapy is not effective on all types of acne. Blue light is designed to help clear to uh, clear mild to moderate inflammatory acne, red inflamed pimples. Yes. Um, but, uh, not whiteheads and, and blackheads. So there are two types of aging I want to talk about. Um, so, and I want to tell you, you know, how the LED light therapy fits with the anti-aging um, process here. So you have the two types of aging, which is intrinsic and extrinsic. Intrinsic is genetics. It's hereditary. It's all in the individual physiology. Um, extrinsic is... Uh, um, Everything that's outside of us, like sun exposure, ozone pollution, stress, diet, smoking, alcohol consumption, which that's 85% of aging, and we do have control over that. So all of these factors are related to inflammation. Let me ask you another question. Did you know that anti-aging benefits were discovered while treating cancer? 
That's amazing also. Now, what causes inflammation? Viruses, bacteria, injury to the skin, high blood pressure, genetic factors, poor diet, stress, alcohol consumption, environmental toxins, oxidative stress, free radicals. That's all of the things that causes inflammation. Now, LED light is not appropriate for everyone, including people taking certain medications that increase their sensitivity to sunlight. I cannot pronounce the medications. One of them is lithium. Cannot pronounce the other one. So those are medications that increase sensitivity to sunlight. So please, when you're doing your intake forms, ask them what medications they're taking to make sure it's not uh, uh, something that's going to prevent them from receiving the treatment, the LED treatment. Um, also history of certain skin conditions, including skin cancer or inherited eye disease. That is something that is not appropriate, uh, for, uh, for those candidates if they want the LED light. Now, let me give you the list of contraindications, um, for LED pregnancy. No. Pregnancy, open and unidentified skin lesions, seizure disorder, autoimmune disorder, clients taking photosynthesizing medications. Uh, do not use LED on anyone with light sensitivities, phototoxic, because they will have phototoxic, they have phototoxic reactions, or anybody that's taking um, uh, uh, antibiotics anyone with cancer, epilepsy, and under a physician's care. And when you're doing an LED, when you're doing the LED treatment, okay, therapy, please, please, please cover the thyroid area. Cover the thyroid area. The thyroid can be stimulated by the LED device. This is very important. You can go on Amazon. They have an LED cover um, you know, thyroid cover, a shield, I would say that you can purchase. And when you begin to do the LED treatment, you can put that, that cover, that shield over them to protect them. Um, now let's talk about the do's and the don'ts. Do not use an, do not use LED on active infections such as herpes and, and, and petigo. Uh, if I'm saying and pronouncing that right, because the because the light can worsen the condition and lead to further uh, uh, infection. Uh, do not use on broken skin, irritated skin, cuts or bruises. The light can further damage and lead to further infection. Don't overuse, as I stated before. Don't overuse because it can cause skin damage, including burns and blisters. Avoid combining LED therapy with other skin treatments like chemical pills and microdermabrasion. Avoid stimulating masks. Uh, I know for one um, that you don't want to put on the skin with LED light is um, by Elemis. Their, their dynamic resurfacing um, gel mask. You don't want to you don't want to use that because it's it's too. It, it, it has an ingredient there that's too triggering, so you don't want to use that. Always wear protective eye goggles. Um, uh, always use the right color. Always use sunscreen after the treatment. After LED therapy skin, it may be more sensitive uh, to sunlight, so you got to avoid direct sunlight. I would say at least the first 24 to 48 hours, avoid direct sunlight, and but always wear your sunscreen. Um, now before you do, you, you get the LED light therapy, come to your esthetician with a clean makeup free face before the LED light therapy, there's going to be a facial that's going to be established. So it's going to be a cleansing. It's going to be exfoliation and toning extractions probably be performed if necessary. Serums is going to be applied and here we are with the LED, okay? And then you're going to apply any ingredients that may cause dry... Okay, wait a minute. If any ingredients that's going to cause dryness or irritation, please make sure you moisturize and use sunscreen on the skin. You know, this, this what I just given you was the 
uh, treatment room protocol. Um, again, wear goggles, safety goggles to protect your eyes from the bright lights. It's recommended to perform the LED therapy on bare skin. Um, your esthetician will place the device above your face and you just will lie there for about 20 minutes and you may feel a warmth, but there's no discomfort at all if you never experienced an LED light therapy before. Um, LED uh, can be can be used to support facials, microcurrent, waxing, microdermabrasion. Um, I wouldn't do that, but with the microdermabrasion, but you know, some some researchers says you can, some says don't. So I stick with don't. Uh, oxygen treatment, chemical pills, dermaplaning, and micro needling. That some you have, when you do this the research, some say yes and some say no. So I'm just going with where it says it can support, but just know how to apply the treatment. Um, after LED therapy, one can return to the regular activities as normal, except for one exception: stay out of the sun for you know a, couple, a few days, a couple of days, and apply sunscreen. Now the risk: if you're asking, is there any risk? LED light therapy is safe. It's risk-free treatment. If you're having thoughts of purchasing one for home, be sure your device or your mask is marked FDA cleared, okay, or FDA approved because, you know, there's no recovery time for LED light um, besides being careful to sun exposure in the 48 hours after treatment. Uh, seek medical attention if you experience hives, um, inflammation, pain, rash, or redness. When you are purchasing an LED device, find out if it's FDA cleared. Find out where it's, it is manufactured. Um, is there a warranty? And the manufacturer provide education and support for that device. There are practical considerations that you should really, you know, um, take heed. Um, so again, um, I think that's all I have for now because this is just a tidbit. I can't get into depth about everything. So I thank you so much, you know, for watching my video. Uh, I hope you leave me a comment. I hope you like this video, share this video. Um, I hope you have taken away some great notes and um, you learned something, you know, from this video. Thanks again. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Have a great day and God bless you all. Thank you.